Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Welcome to the video. As yesterday promised, today a full video all about kicks, where to find them, how to create them, how to shape them, how to use them, and what's important knowing about kicks, getting them right. They are so important for modern music. If I hear a demo for my label, and there, there's like one thing that changes like 50, 40% of the mixing. It's just replacing the kick with a good one and readjusting everything. It's, it's a huge factor, a huge factor. Before we get started, uh, a little announcement, but there is also something you'll gain from it. I have a new song that is out now with my new project called Violated. It just entered the Beatport Top 100 Melodic Techno Charts, which is really nice. So I would really highly appreciate it, any kind of help from you guys. If you like the song, if you want to DJ it, if you want to listen to it in full quality, there is a link down below in the description where you can buy it. It's very inexpensive. And for everyone that supports me as a thank you, you'll get 50, my top 50 kicks as a download, just send me the invoice to the email also down below in the description. And you'll have kicks that I've been working on for 10 years. And that's also already the very first tip, how to get a good kick, getting a kick by someone else or sampling a kick. So if you're interested, just follow the description and you'll get those 50 kicks. The second method involves hardware or a plugin to create kicks. It's a very nice piece of equipment. It has like analog in engines and is creating the samples in a circuit within there, like really old school. It's really good for tech house, techno, all of those more backwards, pass oriented kind of styles of electronic dance music. But I wouldn't recommend it. It's super, super, super expensive. I, I got it uh, used from a friend for a discount and, and I just love the knobs and everything. But I, I've sampled um, like those 50 kicks that you can get, like 20, 25 of them are out of this machine, the best I could get. And I'm now even thinking of selling it because I'm actually using those 20, 25 more than creating new ones because um, there is not that much you can change. You can change like the pitch, the length, the knock kind of part of the kick and the tick, like the little click part of it. And there are other tools that are way more sophisticated, way cheaper, and that's what I would love to showcase next. Kick 2, amazing plugin. You basically draw a kick and you can shape it in any way, kind or form you want. And you can layer real kicks on top of it. There are amazing presets in there. It's a little pricey. I personally, if, if you want to save money, just get the demo version. It has white noise every 30 seconds. That's annoying, but it's enough time to generate, like just one day sit there and make kicks, a hundred of them, bounce them out, use them as audio, and then see what works for you in your songs and narrow it down to 10 again. That's what, also what I did. That's what's part of the sample pack as well. And then just reuse those kicks, shape them, form them again, and this way develop your own kind of uh, kit of kicks that always work for you and your music. But um, this plugin is also really amazing to explain how it works. As an alternative, if you have Serum, just Google for like a Serum, how to make a kick with a Serum kind of tutorial. You'll get basically the same thing. You can, you can use a wave um, and then shape it. That's the standard kick whenever you open up the plugin. You can change uh, the key of the kick. You, you see the notes and uh, the hertz. I would highly recommend you using span opened at the same time. You can really check the frequencies. You can check what it kind of looks like, where the peak is at. And this kick is definitely too high. It's at C2. That's something I would never ever recommend. All of your kicks, at least for electronic dance music, should be between 43, 45 hertz to 55. If you go above, they, they are just too high to hit really hard in the club. And if they're lower, they're just mud and most speakers can't really play them. So let's go down to, I, I personally like the lower end, 44. And you see the notes. So that's also one reason why most electronic dance music songs are either an F or, or G.
Then you need to control the click part. This is really nice about using Kick 2. You can change it later on. You have your entire song finished. The click doesn't cut through. You can just increase it. If you have a sample, you can just um, put like an EQ on top and boost the top frequencies to do the same or just layer a, a top kick on top of your bass mid kick and just increase the volume on there. Also, you got like an amp shape. We can shape the volume of the kick throughout its duration. And in recent years, these super highly tight, clicky short kicks are the thing that I hear the most. You can have bigger bass, you can have a louder track overall. That's what most people do at the moment. Kicks are just getting shorter. The length of the kick is probably the most important factor. You can um, shorten any kind of kick, even a sample, just by shaping the envelope. But making it longer is a little trickier. Again, here with Kick 2 or here with this device, you have full control. But full control also means you need to know what you're doing. You need to have the right room, the right speakers to actually be able to hear everything and judge it correctly. And also always keep in mind, kick and bass are one unit. They share the same space. The bigger your kick, the longer, the boomier, the bassier the less space is there for your bass. It's always a compromise. Most songs go for either a big kick and a small bass or a small kick and a big bass. Both at the same time is impossible and going for a half big kick and half big bass usually sounds a little boring. So depending on the style of music, you go either direction. That one is maybe a little too short. You can lengthen it down here. Length of the kick also depends on the tempo. The slower a track is, the more space you have in between the kicks, the longer they can be. The faster, the shorter. And then if you want to have a more natural feel, you can add, um, for example, a hat on top. And then you can limit all of it. You can uh, put a compressor on top, distort it. But those are also things you can do with samples. So getting samples by other people, either through sample packs. I, I wouldn't advise using sample packs that much. If you have like a nice kick you like of a sample pack, that's fine. Use it. But most sample pack creators, they just steal kicks from other people. And if you already use stolen kicks, then at least steal them yourself so you know where they're coming from and how they were stolen. Because if you cut a kick out of a mastered song, uh, you will have sometimes phasing issues, maybe another tone on top of it or in the kick in between that just doesn't fit the key of your song. Getting a kick by someone else you admire, a kick that you really like, if you can cut it out of there and use it, go for it. It's part of how this entire house dance music developed. It's totally cool. No one will ever find out. And uh, yeah, it's part of it's part of the culture, to be honest. I, I don't think anyone will be angry for you taking a kick, and there is no way to find out. I know some people will now say I'm I'm advising you to steal stuff from other people, but <laughs> it's a very competitive space. And just just do whatever it takes to get to the end result. You're the artist, you have the vision of creating the song. If you want to have this specific kick and it fits to the style of the song and it helps you mixing and cleans everything up, just go for it. So yeah, getting samples, creating your own kicks, and then of course, shaping it, shaping it to into a form that fits your song. Change the key. I know a lot of people advise that always the kick is in the key of the song. It's not necessarily something you have to do. It doesn't need to be the root note because sometimes uh, it's just not possible because you should stick to that 43, 55 hertz range. Just use another note that is part of the key. 
and even sometimes for weirder techno tracks it's it even sounds nice when it's clashing like a tiny bit again if you're interested in my top 50 kicks that's the first time i'm giving these away just uh support me on beatport send me the invoice everything you need to know is linked down below in the description thanks a lot for watching i hope this helped if you have any questions leave them down below in the comments i'll try to answer as many as i can thanks